morning, welcome. Good morning. Uh, many of you were here less than two years ago, here celebrating your 90th birthday, so we're trying to make this a celebration as well. Another birthday, birthed into the kingdom of God in a full sense. And uh, we have some wonderful people that are here to remember her in a variety of ways. There's also lots of pictures there and uh, a slideshow, I call it a slideshow, a PowerPoint there over in the area where we're going to have lunch later. So I greet you Look at this. with these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy, the God of all consolation, who comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. I invite you to stand now for how great the art. The words are here, but if you'd like to look in a hymnal, that's in this book.
baptism that links our lives to his. All who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Norma was clothed with Christ. The day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gives us life, we glorify you. Glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death on, for all the humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure and confident hope and ever everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O oh blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in prayer. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister and mother. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on her. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to remember Norma in a variety of ways. And carry your, are you starting? This was written by my mother, Terry, and she asked if I could share this with you today. This is a day to honor an extraordinary woman, a good friend, our mom, our mom, and now our angel. What can be said about a woman who was a great mother, my best friend, my partner in so many adventures, my neighbor, my confidant, and my cheerleader? And let me not forget that she was a great shoulder to cry on, too. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't admit there were negatives. That saying, cleanliness is next to godliness, was only penned to justify a Saturday morning court for the kid. My mom's idea of clean went above and beyond all the other kids' moms in our tightly knit neighborhood. As such, we reluctantly learned the fine art of not just how to clean, but how to normal Rogers clean. And there is a big difference. If we went away as a family, my mom would be on our hands and knees, scrubbing the floor as she backed out, front door to leave. And as my mom cleaned, she was happy and she would whistle. And my mom whistled a lot. My mom had so many extraordinary gifts and talents. She could fix, create, and arrange, or do anything she set her heart's desires to. She wallpapered, upholstered, painted, refinished furniture, and made amazing floor arrangements, and cooked for six people every night. And cook she did. When we lived one block away from our elementary school, my mom thought that a homemade lunch was better than a sack lunch. So we ran home every day at different times for lunch and then raced back onto the playground. On rainy days, I managed to slosh through every puddle and water-filled gutter in one block, and my mom couldn't figure out how I could get so wet. On the days she forego the chance of homemade lunch, she would pack a sack lunch, and I thought that I was in heaven, getting to eat my treasure at a picnic table. On the outside of my paper bag, she would write, Terry is Vakapia, which means good girl in Danish. It took me a long time to see that my mom's love was in those homemade lunches. Another of my mom's greatest joys was a day at the beach. She packed enough supplies to feed an army, and in a huge ice chest, loaded up the cars with rafts, umbrellas, and towels. And some days we'd stay and cook at the fireplace. This is where my mom could truly relax while soaking up the sun. As I grew, my mom always encouraged and cheered me on in every endeavor and misadventure. I always knew how proud she was, and she had made me feel like I could do and try anything. As an adult, our relationship grew beyond mother-daughter, and we became great friends with lots of deep, philosophical talks of life, relationships, 
raising children, and there might have even been a little gossip mixed in there from time to time. And with my mom, the help was always available. There were times that babysitting issues cropped up, or one of the boys became ill in the morning, and my mom, without hesitation, would drive from Pomona and meet me at my school in Ontario and take the boys back to her house. She'd even drive to Kaiba to spend all day with them with giddy pleasure. Mormon would travel any and all three ways for all of us to babysit grandkids or really just help us with anything. My mom was not only content to only babysit on short notice, but she also had to clean our houses while there. I didn't come home to find that my mom had rearranged my furniture because she thought it looked better her way. My mom was not only generous with her time, but also with her money and with all of us. When she thought there was a need for either her children or grandchildren, my mom would jump up and supply whether or not we approved. This is also her motto for anyone less fortunate, the homeless or anyone in need. There were numerous times when my mom paid for a motel room for a homeless family, paid for dentures held hostage by a dentist when they couldn't afford the final balance, rescued all kinds, took them home, got medical aid, and helped rummage sales to raise money for various charities. And of course, there was volunteering at the food pantry. That was always important to her. There was always a $5 dollar bill in her car, ready for a homeless person on the corner. She felt that whatever they spent it on was what they needed most. With mom, many gatherings for holidays and special events were required to be held at Mormon Heels House in both Pomona and in Kaiba. Before an event, my mom cleaned as if the Pope himself was arriving, and the menu received just as much care and attention. My mom loved to set a table with china, candles, and beautiful floral arrangements. There was never a reason, never a shortage of reasons, to show one's best. Our relationship took on a new meaning when she and Keel built their retirement home just two doors away from us, and we loved having them so close. The boys had two homes. Hours and moments. We all spent a lot of time together. It was the greatest treat to come home from school and get a phone call from my mom saying that dinner would be ready at six. In the mornings as I drove down the street to go to school, my mom would be waving at me from her kitchen window. More more guiding and listen to the boys throughout the teenage years when I would hold them for a piece of licorice and they would give me away for free. And then one day as the boys started moving out, so off we went, more more of me. Wherever the boys moved, more and I had to follow, traveling all over the country and continents to visit them. After Keel's passed away, it was a great companionship for Moore to have us close, and we were able to give back a small fraction of what she had provided for so long. To be able to help her with her house and whatever she needed, she also had her church and volunteer activities that kept her busy. Family gatherings and events shifted to our house, but Mormor would always bring the floor arrangements and side dishes. There were still calls from her at times that dinner would be ready at six. And then things started to change. As mom's memories started to ebb, there were more medical issues and lots of doctor visits. ER trips in the middle of the night, and then I got to drive lots of freeways to take her places. During the pandemic, it was my turn to call and tell my mom every night that dinner would be ready at six. And so it was my turn to look out for and after my mom. As some might be aware, this was not always appreciated by Momor or well received. The strong, independent Viking from Denmark, who had been on her own since the age of 15, surely would not go quietly. When she was unable to drive anymore, she would tell me all the time the police would have to catch her. <laughs> and I know that some of you received calls from my mom asking for aid in retrieving her car. Offering her some extra help in her home was not only rejected, but the lovely helpers were also shown to the door in short order. An alert medical necklace was the real bottle to her and not worn most of the time. One night, she dropped it on the bathroom counter, ignored the two phone calls from the company, and was so surprised to have me running in her house to check on her. I had to apologize profusely to the fire truck that rolled up while my mom was busy waiting at them from the kitchen window. In trying to keep her somewhat active and engaged, I took her weekly to her hair appointment with Jeff, whom she loved and adored. The times when I was traveling meant to caregiver would come to take her, and my sweet mom would find every reason to cancel and have the caregiver leave. For the last several months, 
my mom needs to carry us around the clock. And I knew it wasn't a good sign when she now welcomed and accepted them. God sent her two angels, Jamie and Michelle. Jamie would spend 12 hours a day with her, and Michelle was there for 12 hours a night. They loved her and treated her as their own mom, and made her life more comfortable in any way they could. And for that, I filled with gratitude and love. My mom was immeasurably blessed. So to my dear sweet mom, this is not goodbye. But until we meet again in heaven, I will never be able to do anything but stick a bunch of flowers in a vase. I use paper plates, and my cooking is strictly subpar. But mom, I love to clean just like you taught me. I love my children and grandchildren beyond measure. I have your heart, and for that, I am forever grateful. Our condolences from Denmark. This is from John Dandar, who is a lifelong friend of Norma and who um, my mom used to babysit um, when she was very young. Norma is no longer here. She was part of my life all the way. She came to my family in Orkus, Denmark, around the age of 15, helping my mother with everything in the house. One of my fondest memories is of me riding on her back as a young boy as she scrubbed the floor. It was immediately clear that she had an enormous amount of initiative and at the same time great love for the whole family, which in no time made her one of us. I think she would have remained in Denmark was it not for my father, who at her age had been several years in New Zealand and Australia and for that reason advised her to go abroad and experienced the world which she did. She went to England to work, met Peter, and the rest is history. She always came back to Denmark with Peter and the children. It was a sad day when she left, but she remained in contact with my family all through life. As a matter of fact, her feeling for my mother was so strong that when my mother was 97, she felt now it is close and went all the way to Copenhagen to visit her. Norma was right. My mother died three months after Norma's visit. I myself and my sister Elizabeth are so fortunate to have been in touch with Norma all the way through. First of all, through long, really long letters, until recently when it became telephone calls for hours. But also visits in Los Angeles with my son, nine years old at the time, where Norma would show him everything we're seeing in California in three days. He is as sad today as any of you are. I could continue for hours, but I will only tell you that for me, it is as if I have lost a sister. And if anyone deserves to go directly to heaven, it is Norma. Her kindness and support to the weak and less fortunate is a guideline to every human being. May she rest in peace. And also from Denmark, words of remembrance at Aunt Norma's funeral. This is from Peter Henning Thompson, who's uh, Norma's nephew. Once upon a time, like in a fairy tale, three young girls left their poor family home and went out into the big world to seek happiness. The oldest was named Herdes, the second oldest was, na was named Karn, and the youngest was named Norma. The two elder sisters each found a soldier to whom they became engaged. After a time in the big, strange, and scary city, they returned to the village from which they came. Here they married and had children and lived until the end of their days. But the youngest, Norma, was the wildest and most unruly. She had both the will and courage for much more. The desire for adventure led her across the sea to England. What am I doing here, she thought. I don't know the language, but I can dance and I have to talk with my feet. So I'll go to the pubs to dance so that I can get to know other young people. And it turned out to be a good strategy. Here she met and fell in love with a tall and handsome English, Englishman named Peter. He became the great love of her life. Together they traveled to Canada, got married, and started a family. Years later they moved on almost to the end of the world 
and settled in California. The rest is history. And the family has grown. Four children, nine grandchildren, and even six great-grandchildren. And Peter goes on to reflect uh, just this last weekend. Um, so he goes on. On Sunday, I visited Sonatronis with my cousin and my Aunt Catherine. We were together to remember Aunt Norma. We began the day with a service in the small, cozy village church, which has been settling, which has been the setting for our family's life in sorrow and joy for several generations. Baptisms, confirmations, weddings, and funerals, the highlights of life. Aunt Norma and her siblings were baptized and confirmed here. Most of them were also married here. My mom and dad and Aunt Paradis and Uncle Harold held a double wedding here. Aunt Gerda and Uncle Thorko, Aunt Gudrun and Uncle Kjell did the same. My brother Bjarne and I were also baptized and confirmed here. My mom and dad, my brother Bjarne, my grandmother and my grandfather on both sides and many other family members are now buried here. Our mormor was a diligent churchgoer. Aunt Norma did it in and Aunt Norma didn't get it from strangers. Every time she visited Denmark, the church was the most natural point on the itinerary. Two children were baptized in the church this last Sunday, and the priest, remi the priest reminded us that the baptism ritual has taken place in this church for almost a thousand years. You can sense the wings of history between these thick walls and the small church. Life and death, grief, and joy. After the service, we took the trip through the town that Aunt Norma described the last time I spoke to her on the phone. When she practiced remembering, she visited the street of childhood. The starting point was her mother's house. Then she walked, in her mind, through the town and tried to remember who lived in the different houses. The merchant, the dairy, the small school, and the shop. Now the fairy tale princess has passed on, but her love lives in our consciousnesses and in our hearts. The adventure continues. The future chapters are to be written by you. wanted to share some thoughts uh, being uh, one of the grandchildren and so many of us and being fortunate enough to have her live so close. I wanted to share some memories that we all might have together. Today, many have gathered to celebrate the exceptional life of Norma, known by many and beloved by all. To us, our grandchildren, she was far more than mere exceptional, and it was known simply as more and more. To know more and more is to have known an almost ethereal form of love and kindness that one could aspire to. It wasn't just in the way she treated you, or her kind words, or the overt displays of love and affection, the warm greetings or easy smile, the birthday or just because cards that never failed to arrive. It was the realization that every act from Norma, big or small, was in itself that show of love. She would consume herself with the smallest of tasks for you as if it was the most important thing in her entire world. The joy she exuded in being able to help in as many, in any manner, was infectious, and I'm sure that why so many were drawn to her. Having a moment like we did was obviously no small feat, and yet with poise and grace, she wrangled us all, from our earliest days, long into our adult lives, from taking care of us and our best children to being there for our children. Cousin get together to sleepovers of Walmart are still fondly remembered and cherished memories and she could do it all with a smile. The black forest gummy bears that would magically appear from her purse every Sunday in the church. The fact that her sandwiches, to this day, are still the best we've ever tasted. The fridge and garage that always had the perfect temperature can of pop that could be enjoyed any time, as long as you wash the top first. Or there were the beach days, and I think we could all share stories for those on ours. The well-oiled machine of snacks and lunch, the parade of sand toys and boogie boards, and of course, the American flag marker, the one inflexible, normal rule, you stay where you can see the flag. 
even the colossal power of the Pacific Ocean and yielded to that rule of Normar. And there were always adventures to be had with Normar in the Pomona house for us all. The scooters that could be ridden for hours on end, an avocado tree that was perfect for climbing, or the pool table room where children alone were allowed to congregate. A great source of entertainment where we were free from the prying eyes of the oppressive parents' regime. Mormor had a special way of turning it all into adventure. The time she bought us a hot tub for the backyard, which was only a 50 gallon trash can filled from the garden hose. But that was Mormor's gift. She could make anything better, and you believe it, because she made it all come true. Mormor always had the patience with us. From a tete-a-tete -tete as adolescents to an unruly mob of teenagers congregating at our house, she never faltered. And I mean, who could forget the great Studebaker scandal painting of the late 90s? When heads would have when heads but instead would always offer words of encouragement or suggestions for your own betterment to help you realize to always do the right thing, no matter how hard or Mormor spent a lifetime in service of good deeds to help any who are less fortunate. Her impact is immeasurable. And for us, her grandchildren, the impact is easily quantified. She was our everyone. A beacon of all things good and wholesome, a person to confide in, a friend for any occasion, a person who would give everything of herself for any need she thought she could help with. She was a sparkling personality who radiated in the center of any room while never wanting to be the star. She was the person who taught and loved us all, the person who was irreplaceable and who we truly miss in our lives. She was in a word, more. Well,
Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. Now you do know him and have seen him. Grace and peace from God our Creator and Christ our Redeemer. Thank you all uh, for sharing. And again, we do have slides uh, in the area where you pick up your food today, too. Lots of planning went into the funeral. Uh, planning ahead of time by Norma. We tried to do the best we could following her wishes. On Sunday, uh, my wife's making some plaques for kids. Oh, is Joshua here with you? It, no, not Joshua. Oh, you are. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. My wife asked him what color he would want on his plaque, and he was not sure. He just didn't want to the colors. And I thought, you know, if my wife had asked Norma, what color should be on the plaque. There would be no a suggestion that we don't know what color that would be. It's the color of the urn that's right before you, and of the blue that's all around the church and that sort of thing. Blue in her home, blue in the church, blue in her apartment. And the final apartment there, they had to move her. They're extending the offices, so they moved her out of the blue into apartment 128, which was not blue carpet. So I thought of that as kind of the way life is. We have opportunity in this life to kind of control it and make sure we have this and that and put it together, make sure everything's really clean and the flowers are just so. But there comes a time when we need to let go and to fall back into the grace of God. And that's why we gather today, is that this person has brought so many wonderful memories, and thank you for sharing. Uh, now we just have to let her fall back into the arms of God. And I think there might be some Danish blue up there, but even more what's up there is a sense of home that um, so many of you talked about today, that she created a space for people to be welcome. As a matter of fact, our first Sunday here, Connie and I came through the door and there she was sitting in the pew, handing out bulletins, welcoming people. We were not Danish, so not as heavy a welcome as might have happened. <laughs> But welcome indeed. And I think of her now, uh, you know, some family members have suggested that heaven needs a little sprucing up so Norma's there doing her cleaning job. But I think more so of her sitting there in welcome to say, here, come to your home. Because she had a heart for people that didn't have a home in this world. And, uh, Come home, that song we just sang, come home, come on, here is the place. She counted on the promises of Jesus. Thomas says in our text, hey Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way to get there? MapQuest doesn't have it. My Google Maps, whatever. So how are we supposed to do it? And what Jesus said is, 
I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And what he meant by that is he is the reflection of the creator of the universe. And in being that reflection, we already know. You already know what it's like, Thomas. You got it. And I believe that's the deepest blessing that Norma gives, is that <laughs> they say cleanliness is next to godliness, but the deeper thing for her is the sense of home, the sense that your name's written on a bag for lunch, the sense that you have a place always that you can call home. That deep sense of home is the greatest gift. And she already knows the way. You know what? Because she already gave it out. She already rolled out the tablecloths in this life to people. And the beauty of heaven was already reflected in those flower arrangements. So you do know the way. You do know where she's going. Because she brought it already here now to this place. And we thank God for that. And may we, in our own lives, create a space for people to be where the homeless can find a home, where the people who wander can find a place. Welcome the stranger, care for those around you. Allow yourself to experience heaven by bringing heaven to those that you encounter. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for being a part of our lives and helping us to understand what heaven is like. Especially we thank you for Norma, who has allowed herself to be a vehicle in all of her adventures in life, a vehicle for people to experience a sense of home, a sense of heaven. In your name we pray, and may we dedicate ourselves to that. Amen. Now, before you start, we have an explanation for this hymn because it's rather unusual that there's a connection uh, with this hymn. So, Dave? Oh, Dave's not here? Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter was going to explain. <coughs> oh, well, <laughs> maybe they, it's fine. <laughs> Just, okay, it's cute around, it's just not here, or? We don't know. Okay, well, there, there is a wonderful connection in this song that you'll find out in conversations. So why don't we stand and sing it together? I love that will not let me go.
in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share new life in Christ. God of glory, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and sorrow, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your life and love. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe, and trust. In the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give thanks because by his death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, I invite you to join in the same of the Lord's Prayer.
invite you to uh, follow the family out at this time. And again, we're all set up with lovely flower arrangements.